So I've been so encouraged by some of the nice comments I've been getting and even the not so nice ones um, have been pretty rare uh, and I can understand why people might think um, all this is nonsense but the people that have been enjoying my little chats I thought I'd do another one. Um, this one's not going to be about my Don Q impossible quest um, to go back where I think I'm most needed and where I think I do the most good. Uh, but uh, I thought I'd talk a little bit about um, how balancing was to work with because everybody's always curious about that and as I say in some of my other posts there's not that many of us left uh, that worked with him on the kind of level I did or K. Mazo or Patty McBride or Valella I mean there's you know there's a few of us but not that many anymore and uh, for posterity's sake uh, this might be fun I'm also including at the end of this a clip of me the last time I appeared in tights uh, dancing in classical ballet. I wasn't supposed to. I was in my late 30s and it was uh, right after Balanchina died. And we were doing, my Los Angeles ballet was doing two weeks at the Pantages Theater with full orchestra, which we usually managed to do. But I'll talk about that um, right at the end. One thing that's interesting about Balanchine, which he himself says a lot, is that he was really interested in choreographing on people uh, that he was interested in, that he liked to take out to coffee, uh, that had a personality. Of course, he was a perfectionist, uh, but there's sometimes this misunderstanding um, that he was all just about technique or, or that there was a coldness about it. Um, that is not true. Um, yes, he wanted perfect technique, which of course is unattainable, and that's why we take class every day to try to get better. And when Balanchine taught class, he didn't just give us a warm-up. I mean, he taught. I mean, he was continually fine-tuning our technique and pushing our boundaries and expanding us. And it wasn't always just about speed. The last few years of his life, it was more about speed because, as I said in another post, uh, he was aware of the clock and he said, I have no more time left, dear. So the last three years of his life, things were getting a little crazy in class and, and really fast, and he was taking a lot of shortcuts. There's a lot of misunderstanding about don't put your heel down, but I won't get into that now. But that's, <laughs> that's quite been carried to an extreme that he never meant. Anyway, but um, I got, uh, his and my relationship was very, as I said, very personal and very relaxed. And early on when I was dancing for him, I got this reputation of being able to learn anything very quickly. Uh, the first time was when he threw me on with a two-hour notice in the lead in Rubies in Monte Carlo. And that's a whole other story I won't talk about, but that was fun. But that kind of cemented in his brain that I could learn anything by watching it once. And he even mentions this in the Bernard Taper biography of Balanchine. I think it's in the addendum section at the end, where uh, he's in a cab with Taper and he's talking about my ability that I could see a ballet once and then know all the steps. I think he also makes a crack. Let the siren go. Doesn't it sound like New York? I live close to a fire station, so every now and then. But he makes a crack in the taxi that uh, uh, Clifford would be just as happy doing the girls' roles as the boys. <laughs> I went, well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if someday he had me do that. Um, so besides Monte Carlo, the, the clip I, I'm putting on here is, is La Source, which he originally choreographed for uh, John Prinz and Villa Verdi just as a pas de deux with two solos, two adagios, and a coda. But it was exhausting. I mean, they were dying. So he added a corps de ballet, eight girls, and a solo girl to break it up a bit. So it still has the two adagios, the two solos, and actually a coda and a finale. Uh, but it's paced so that it's just, you get enough rest. But beautiful music, Delib, La Source, and Originally, it was John Prinz and Violette, and then uh, it became, for a short time, Eddie Villella and Violette, only Violette. Uh, as I said earlier, Balanchine didn't like to have second cast or understudies, even. He just wanted to choreograph and focus on the two personalities, people he liked. Uh, used to drive the ballet mistresses crazy because, you know, if there was an emergency, there was no one there that knew it. So what happened was I got this reputation of being able to be thrown in thrown on. And I think that's because I used to be an actor and I learned how to sight read uh, and memorize scripts very quickly. 
And I have a feeling that kind of just carried over. So when I watched a ballet, I kind of just, I would just absorb it like a sponge. I just, I didn't do anything on purpose other than just open my eyes and just kind of let it all in. And I, I had this knack and he talks about it. So I'm not just saying it myself. But anyway, um, so it was Eddie, Valella, and Violette that were doing La Source, and Balanchine was out of town for a week. He used to go to Geneva a lot, and uh, sometimes Zurich. And, um, and Eddie was out, uh, and so that afternoon, Violette uh, grabbed me in the hall. She goes, Johnny, you're going to do La Source with me tonight. And I went, because it's a big role. I mean, and I went, oh, what? You know, she says, Eddie's out. Come to my apartment. I have video. And luckily, there was a woman named Lucia Wayne who used to do all these uh, pirated, surreptitious, brownie movie cameras, silent films of almost all the performances. They're now all at the library for the performing arts, if anybody's interested. But I think you need permission from the, from the Balanchine Trust to see them. But anyway, Lucia had all these films. And so um, actually, that's where we went. I think we went to Lucia's apartment. It was either that or Violet's. And I learned it from the silent video uh, with Violet in her living room somebody's living room and then I was on and I was very happy Balanchine wasn't in New York he was still in Europe I thought and then in the finale I have to do a peak arabesque to stage right which is where he usually stood in the wings down stage right wing and I did the peak arabesque and there he was <laughs> I was like oh my god you know? and we finished and afterwards he took me out to dinner we used to he used to do that a lot in those years and he said you know dear I was not going to come in, but then I heard that you were like dancing, you know, La Source, and I went, oh, he's dancing, so I must see. <laughs> oh, no, don't, no. It was only an emergency. And so uh, he said, so I came immediately straight from airport to theater to see. <laughs> and I went, okay. And he goes, you know, not bad. And with Balanchine, um, his not bads were just about the highest form of compliments. So if, if you came off stage and he said, not bad, then you were like, ah, you know, made your life. So he said, you know, not bad. And then he cast me in it and kept casting me in it, which really surprised me because Eddie was back and, you know, and then Helgi was more a classical dancer than I am. I was more demi character. But anyway, so Balanchine kept me in it uh, until I left the company. And I danced with Violette mostly, but also uh, I think I had a couple with Patty McBride and I know I partnered Gelsey Kirkland in it. Mm, I think I even partnered Kay Mazo maybe. I did Donatzetti with Kay Mazo. Luckily, I got rehearsed for that. <laughs> so anyway, after I stop talking, I'll show you the last time in my late 30s that I ever danced in tights. And it's, uh, I'll just show you just a little clip of one of the solos from the source. And as usual, I was not supposed to dance. I mean, I, would, I was giving up all the hard roles by then. Uh, Balanchine had just died, and, and the night before this, we had done an all Balanchine program where I had to dance Melancholic, which I hadn't done for years and Ruby's because the boy schedule was out. So again, they're out, Clifford's on. Story of my life. So, um, so the night before, I did Melancholic and Ruby's, and the next afternoon was this La Source, which I, again, wasn't supposed to do, but the boy was out. And um, this is filmed at the Pantages Theater, and the floor then was rock hard. This was before the days of sprung floors. We couldn't afford a sprung floor. I went better have a live orchestra than a sprung floor. So we had a big orchestra, but hard as rock floor, and I had torn my calves various times, both calves, uh, over the course of my career, especially as I got older, because I was a jumper, so that was my thing. Uh, so I'm telling you that because I want you to please be kind and forgive my <laughs> my small jumps, because I, I just couldn't, my legs were shot, and my feet were frozen. I didn't even feel them, they were cramped. But um, as I've watched this over the years, a long time ago, this is a long time ago, um, I'm not so displeased with it. <laughs> yes, my, my, I'm not jumping really very high and my feet aren't great, but I tried to do what Balanchine wanted musically. And he used to tell us, and this is a whole other chat, you know, it's not that he didn't like stars. He didn't like fake star personalities, is what it was. 
And there's a danger when you become a principal dancer or a prima ballerina that you feel you owe your audience something extra, that you can't just go out there and dance and have a good time. You know, sometimes they applaud when you walk on stage. <laughs> you know, they did, and it, at least the New York audiences did, because they became so familiar with us. You know, that we were like, it was all a big family in those days. Probably still is. But, um, so you know, you, you go on stage and they applaud, so you feel you have to give them something. So unfortunately, and it comes from a good place. I mean, it's not totally ego-driven. It's more responsibility-driven. You feel you have to do extra because they know you and they expect something. So unfortunately, what happens is a lot of dancers, and this is where the star thing comes into it, uh, they start adding personality. They start adding emoting. They start adding and adding. And pretty soon, you can't see the choreography. And of course, with balancing, that was the most important thing. Music first, then the choreography, and then the dancer. But for him, it was all the melange, you, you needed everything. And, but, um, so it was always, you know, I always kept reminding myself, you know, even if they knew who I was or they applauded, you know, don't, you know, don't do more, just dance it. I said to my dancer, shut up and dance, you know. Now that doesn't mean don't think, it doesn't mean don't enjoy yourself, it just means just dance. I used to feel like I was a vessel for Balanchine's genius, seriously. Uh, and, you know, he liked me, put me in a lot of ballet, so I felt very um, supported by him. That I, I would, And if I went too far, did something stupid, he would say, dear, too much, you know, maybe buttering the bacon. <laughs> okay, I got that, you know. But at the same time, he didn't want anybody to be dull. Look at the principles he had. Vila Verdi, my God, Melissa Hayden, Allegra, Suzanne Farrell, Valella, Jacques, you know, not a dull one in the bunch. All had big personalities. But the thing they all had in common and I like to include myself in that group, is that um, we really sold it, I believe. And Balanchine would say, sometimes when we were running on stage, he said, sell it, sell it. <laughs> and on bows, he'd say, milk it. He'd make us go back for an extra bow, and he'd be in the wings, pantomiming, milking a cow. He'd go, milk it, milk it. <laughs> he was a real clown. But... Um, there is that fine line you don't want to cross where you become an act, where it becomes a shtick. You, you have to, uh, that's, as a director myself, that was an interesting um, lesson to, to, I wanted my dancers, and you've seen my videos of my dancers, they all had tons of personality. Um, and you want them to have the freedom, that's, they're dancing, not you. You know, they're doing your ballet, but they're the ones out there risking it all. And it is risky, you can hurt yourself, let me tell you. But um, <laughs> uh, you also don't want them starting to have that slight edge of phoniness. It's, it's, it's delicate. Uh, you know it when you see it. If somebody's out there emoting and it's like, oh my God, you know, cut the crap, just dance, just show me the ballet. And with balancing, that's the most important thing, of course, the balance. Uh, so I guess that's the end of my story. So what, what you're gonna see now is a um, little bit of old me, the last time I ever appeared in tights. Hmm. Now I changed one step because at the end of this solo, it's supposed to be entrechassis going in four directions, just quarter turn, entrechassis, entrechassis. But at this point in my career and on that stage, no way was I going to be able to do those ceases. So I, I substitute some Alice of One turns and I'm sure he wouldn't mind under the circumstances. God knows I've seen so many changes in that ballet now, I don't even recognize it, really. Especially the musicality. But anyway, uh, so here's a little bit of uh, La Source, and um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed this little chat about working for Mr. Balanchine. It was the joy of my life, and I always feel I still am.